represents Michigan's 35th district, comprising 12 counties in northwestern lower Michigan. Senator Boer was elected to his second term in 2014, and prior to his um, terms as senator, he served three terms as state representative for Osceola, Macosta, and Wexford counties. Um, in the Senate, he chairs the Banking and Financial Institutions Committee and serves as a member of the Agriculture Committee, Education Committee, and the important Senate Appropriations Committee. On that committee, he chairs um, the Community Colleges Subcommittee as well as the Capital Outlay Subcommittee. In fact, we are sitting in this lovely building today to, in large part due to the efforts of Senator Boer. Um, his work on the Capital Outlay Subcommittee was instrumental in getting funding for this project to get started, and I know that he followed along with the progress of the construction um, as the building came forward, and I hope you're able to enjoy the, um, the beautiful building that we have today. Um, an avid outdoorsman and supporter of the Great Lakes, Senator Boer also serves as vice chair of the Great Lakes Legislative Caucus, uh, which is a nonpartisan group of lawmakers from eight United States states and two Canadian provinces. One of the goals of the Great Lakes Legislative Caucus is to promote the restoration and protection of the Great Lakes. So please join me in welcoming Senator Boer. Uh, thank you. Um, can you hear me in the back at all? Uh, uh, that's what I'm afraid of. Uh, my voice is, uh, c comes in and goes out. I was at the doctor here the other day, and he said, Darwin, it's age appropriate. What's the heck does that mean? Really? <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for inviting me here to Central Michigan's uh, event today. I'm going to try to speak loud enough so you can hear me back there. Is it getting better as I get closer? Okay, thank you. I want to also thank, uh, is Toby in the room yet? There is Kathy Wilbur in the room. I heard some of the questions that you asked uh, Congressman Molinart here a few minutes ago. But to have people like those two coming to Lansing to advocate for things that are important to Central Michigan University is very, very important. You can't get much done if you don't have somebody telling us what the, is important to you out here. So just kind of veering off what I prepared this morning. Um, but I want you to know it's very important to have people like that and that we trust them. They come in, uh, even though they're not in my Senate district, uh, uh, it's important that they come in and see us anyway. So um, I'm going to start today by saying something I say quite often. Um, I see not so much the importance to what we draw from the ground. It's really important what we're putting into the ground that we look at. We don't see all the things that go on the ground that go down into the water. We can suck water out. That's been filtered, we hope, and clean. But we don't know that unless we test it. But what we're putting down in that water or hiding in some landfill or something, that is what hurts you, and we can't see it. So what we put down there is more important to me than what we're taking out of the ground. Because most of you that study this know that we still on this earth have as much water as we ever had. Water isn't going anywhere. It just recycles and moves. So if you went back a thousand years, you still got as much water as you ever had on this earth. Now today, I'm not going to try to sit here and tell you uh, what you probably know more than I about water and issues like that. You probably have studied just that. I didn't study water much until I was supervisor of my township and Ice Mountain drilled the first well in my township. So then I got involved. I really got involved. I studied that 
We needed the science behind it. And so today, I'm just going to walk through some of it because in a, as a legislator, you know a little bit about a lot. You probably know a whole lot about this issue, but maybe you don't know so much about 27 different budgets, 1,300 line items, six to seven budgets on a line item. Maybe you don't know all about all of that, but we have to know, and we do. And so it's a little different. We're seeing it maybe in a bigger picture. You're focused in on it. So anyway, I'm going to give me a little bit about my background. We'll start with that, then an overview of the GLLC, which is the vi that I vice chair in the Great Lakes, and why that was formed and, and why we do what we do there. Uh, we're going to look and talk just a little bit about the Sioux Locks, uh, the invasive species that uh, our good congressman just talked about, funding from the state DEQ, and we're going to touch on this area's swimmer itch problem. Anybody in here know anything about it? You got your hands up, let me see. Because in the 35th Senate District, that's a huge issue, and we're hammering on it, you know, so, and we're gaining on something that people said we couldn't do. Well, with the help of a lot of you, a lot of you, we're getting there, and, uh, and we should be proud of what we've been able to accomplish there. So, a little bit about my background. So, all of us have different backgrounds. The good congressman here that just spoke, he and I, I would call him representative congressman, I would call him senator congressman, I would call him congressman now, because I was in the House with him, I was in the Senate with him, I was on appropriations with him, I was on community health with him. Uh, so we know that he's working for you in Lansing, uh, or in, in Washington. I'm confident of it, because eight years we went shoulder to shoulder in Lansing on a lot of issues. So I have a lot of respect for the gentleman that you just heard. Um, background, quickly, I was born and raised a dairy farmer six miles north of Everett, Michigan, where I reside today, and my grandkids are seventh generation on that farm. So that's where my beginning. People say, where did you get your education? Oh yeah, well, I graduated from the University of Wisconsin, but my education came out behind the barn with my dad and my grandfather, with their big hands on me, who pushed the back when every time I got off track, they were on my back. And most of you probably had somebody like that out there that said, whoa, 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 you know, Maybe you've extended a little further than that rope should go, come back. So that's who, where I got my, I think, common sense. There are a lot of things that we deal with down there. So yes, I, at 19, because I had broke my leg four times in high school, uh, couldn't be a dairy farmer, and went into banking. So at 19, I started learning a little bit about banking. 41 years later, I retired from there. But while I was doing that, I ran for supervisor of the township when I was 34 years old. In there came the assessor. So I learned how to be the assessor for on property. I was now the banker, the assessor, the supervisor, and the farmer. I never left the farm. So I'm running 100 head of cattle and doing that as well. So that is the background of where I got what I got. So retired 41 years there because they, I couldn't believe they couldn't balance the state budget. I got into politics there really seriously. Tell me you can't balance the budget. I don't want anything else. I, we got enough laws in the books of this state. Give me the checkbook. <laughs> Give me the checkbook. I'll tell you what, I know I can balance that. And so in 2005, when I went on and into Lansing and won by 411 votes, uh, that's not much, is it? <laughs> so I always said 79% of the people didn't win 
want me. I won with 21% of the vote. So I wasn't the most popular, probably. I only had 21% of the vote, right? So anyway, we get there, and uh, we have to list the committees that we might be interested in. So I said, appropriations, give me the checkbook. And I, in 2005 was not a good time to be on it. We were going downhill, and we were going downhill quickly. So I'm trying to rein it in, but you're one member of a of uh, 110 in the House, and you're one member now of uh, 38 senators. So you have to get your voice in there, and you have to be able to be heard. So we went on there. We chaired the community college. Never served on a school board. I never even have, a, a, in my three counties, I don't have a community college. I'm stepping in as the chair of that one. Interesting. We got 28. I didn't even know that. I didn't know how many students was in there. Now yeah, we got 400,000 community colleges. Whew. I have a real learning curve to get background there. So we went on there. I've never come off appropriation. I've been on there longer than any other member of that appropriation. 13 years I've served on it. So when I said how many pages it was, how many line items there is, Great questions was coming when you say, well, why don't they always fund $300 million? You have this pot with a revenue, and you take that dollar, and there's 27 different departments to go to. As soon as I pull $300 million or put in another $150 million, I got to pull that from the health, roads, from some other budget. I've got to take it from somewhere else. Where do I take it? So that's the picture you're looking at when you're looking at this pot and this pie here's the budgets they talked about 14 the budget in Michigan's 27 so you've got to take it and move it out of here to fund something more here it's not like it just grows now Washington does just grow I mean because they they print their own money you know we don't do that in Michigan we have to balance it so with that is a little bit about where I'm at. I am the assistant whip on the Senate floor. So what does a whip mean? Well, I'm going to come and talk to you about how you're going to vote, right? We need this thing passed, right? So the whip talks to you and says, okay, need this vote passed. How are you going to vote? How would you like to change that vote? <laughs> and the whip is to find out where you're at on the, on the floor. And so sometimes uh, that's an interesting job when you're doing that. Um, so let's talk about the Great Lakes Caucus that I'm the vice chair of, who deals with your water issues all the time. That was formed, uh, anybody studied the, the compact, Great Lakes Compact? Anybody heard of that? in this room? Okay, that was formed to protect those Great Lakes. This caucus was formed out of that. The eight states that touch the Great Lakes. Anybody know who they are? Just looking through here. Who touches the Great Lakes that has an interest in really what happens here? Could it be Minnesota? Could it be Wisconsin? Could it be Illinois? Could it be Indiana? Could it be Ohio? Could it be Pennsylvania? Could it be New York? Ontario? I mean, Quebec? Could it be those places that have really touched the Great Lakes that you see the difference? There is where you have the most interest, and they're the ones that advocate for you. So I'm going to tell you, as that vice chair of the Great Lakes, has, they have three primary goals. Facilitate the regional exchange of ideas and information on the key Great Lakes issues. Could metformin be an issue with the Great Lakes? Anybody know what metformin is? It's showing up five miles out of Milwaukee, out in Lake Michigan. 
Does doctors prescribe that for sugar? Big problem. Big problem. You all know about plastics and the parts that are showing up in the Great Lakes. Well, pharmaceuticals that are creating us a problem, nobody knows about it except the one that knows it is University of Wisconsin, their experimental stations in Milwaukee. They're who we rode out with. So this group works with those kind of issues. <laughs> um, we strengthen the role of the states and the pro uh, provincial legislators in policy making and promote the restoration and the protection of the Great Lakes. Those are your three primary goals of that group. We meet every year together, all the states, and we talk about those issues that are really, really important to the Great Lakes. Um, so this year, we passed four resolutions in Toronto uh, when we met. Um, so I'm going to I'm I'm going to uh, if I can find them, guys. This morning on the way here, um, an eight-point book. I'm sure it was uh, jumped on the front of my car, and all my papers went shooting right down on the floor. So it may be out of order what I have here, but I'm telling you, since I've been state representative and senator, I have hit 14 deer and total five cars. So. <laughs> Do I get excited when a deer jumps out in the road? Yep, I kind of do. So anyway, one of the resolutions, one of the resolutions was to support the Sioux Locks. That's the whole group. That's all the states supporting Michigan and that Sioux Locks because it affects every one of them. The other one was contaminants of emerging concerns in the Great Lake Basin. Now, did I talk about metformin and those there? is some of the issues that we are addressing as well. Uh, proposal three was in support of the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. You just heard Congressman talk about that 300 million. Well, yeah, he did talk about it, but I'm gonna show you something here that we do, I did in the state as being part of that. This sheet here, represents every dollar that's going out in that $300 million. I've read every line of it. I know where every, the first three pages is going to Native Americans, all the money. First three pages. It's going out to Native American projects here. Of the $300 million you're talking about, $157 million is Michigan. Rest is out in those other states. So you want to go online and find out what, and I did immediately, once I knew, to look at where was the money going. Was it, as Congressman said, being spent like we think it should be spent on the projects we think it should be spent on? Well, go look, and you can make a decision on your own. Dave grasses important certain places and whatever. Poof, poof. Hundred fifty-seven thousand or hundred thousand dollars goes to that, but it lists everyone and who gets it and so on. So do that sometime. Just look it up, and you can see what he's talking. I have, and it's on my desk. And every time this issue comes up, I'll say, "What are we? Where are we talking? What are we talking about?" And we go in there and we look at it, and so uh, we can we can somewhat talk intelligently about that $300 million. Fourth resolution was the risk posed to the Great Lake Basin water resource and health of the residents of copper mining. That, that bill. Now, on that particular resolution, I did not support it because we have a huge amount of mining in the UP. Michigan does. And we'll talk a little bit about the Sioux Locks in a minute, but, but how much iron ore goes through that. All the iron ore comes through the Sioux Locks from the UP. So if I go out and against that kind of mining, then I have 
I'm on the opposite side of economic growth in the in the cabinet or the UP and jobs and but they now we have the most the in the state of Michigan has most strict regulations on mining there is in the nation and so take a look at the regulations in the DEQ for mining in the state of Michigan so anyway that got passed the group passed it I didn't happen to support it because I'm in Michigan and it could have so the conference, when you get together there, each state talks about issues within its own state. Mine issues were Line 5, Ice Mount, Potash, the Sulox, and the Asian Carp Challenge to the state of Michigan. Those were what? All the other members, all the people in the, all other states, including Canada, heard from Michigan this year. So I think we're watching for time. I want to make sure we pop through these items uh, as quick as we can now. Um, we have, and you can go on and get the areas of Michigan that we have a, a, an issue with yet that need to be cleaned up, things that need to be uh, dug up, out of the ground, tanks and other things that are buried there. These we went through are all the regulations pending in the federal government that deal with our, our Great Lakes, all of them. This big sheet here is all the regulations that are pending in the state of Michigan and other states. Now, I mean, I'm talking about all the states that I just talked about. All of these, these many pages, are all those states that have pending legislation that would deal with our Great Lakes. And going back to the Sioux Locks, right here, and you can go online and get this, but 100% of all the mining in the U.S. comes through the Sioux Locks. 5.500 billion dollars of iron ore passes through the locks annually. Shipping in the Great Lakes saves us 3.6 billion a year by able to ship it um, through there. One freighter, just one freighter, is 3,000 trucks. 3,000 trucks, one freighter, keeps 3,000 trucks off that road that wouldn't be there otherwise. Um, so that's how important. If that Sioux Lock shut down, you'd shut down the whole center of the state. Jobs, millions, millions, maybe they claim 11 million jobs would be lost immediately if that goes down. What were we doing in the Second World War to protect that? We had, we had our own uh, armed forces stationed there. So if you had a freighter go in there today and blow it up, uh, I'm telling you what, you'd be out of business um, and most places would shut down quickly. So we have to, we have to fix that locks and make it, make it better. I, um, I'll jump back here a minute so we get through uh, uh, all the things that we want to talk about. We're down through the Sioux Locks. That Asian carp issue, there is absolutely, they've worked with the uh, Great Lakes Caucus on that. We have seen it, $25 billion to reroute the water. We now, most of, maybe some of you studied it, we dump out of the end of Great Lakes, uh, Michigan, two billion gallon a day, out that runs out through the canal, through Chicago. Chicago takes a billion of it for their own use there to supply to their drinking waters and other things. And a billion goes on to the Mississippi River out of the great, out of Lake Michigan every day. So um, we looked at their first plan. The plan just took that water and dumped it right back in to Lake Michigan. Just 
$25 billion project. Now, that hasn't gotten any much uh, news media, and it hasn't gotten much attention because where's the $25 billion coming from, and how long with that? Well, 25 years from now, they might have it done. But Illinois will not stand for it, will not stand for it. You can't get them to su support that. So that too much con uh, commerce going down through there. And uh, so there's got to be something better than that. My suggestion was to them in the beginning was let the fishermen go to it. Let them catch all the goddamn fish they can and don't have a limit and just do it. And do that. And at least you're doing something to try to, to curb this thing. But they have, the, they have found them up in, uh, it was Ontario, or one of the province, the two provinces up there said they have picked up carp there now. So uh, end of Lake Erie, up in there, Ontario, up in somewhere in there, they've, they found them. So in our budget for the state, we have, uh, appropriated uh, for the rest, uh, Great Lakes restoration coming through federal money, $15 million uh, dollars there. The Office of Environmental um, Assistance uh, gets um, about $6 million. Um, Great Lakes Office of the Great Lakes gets about $3 million out of the state budget for the DEQ. How many of you know what the biggest user of our water is. Anybody knows that? Who uses the most water? Well, water use in Michigan. You go there and look. Uh, your power plants, 78% of the water use goes through them, through the power plant. Well, the next biggest user of the water is your municipal water supplies. They use 15% of the water. If you look at agriculture, irrigation, 6% of the water. So I look at that bottled water. Bottled water uses 0.01% of the water, guys. And what is the biggest selling uh, uh, item in our, st our state? Is it Coca-Cola, Pepsi, that? Water. Water. Bottled water. More people want that and buy that than our pop. Yeah? That's, that's the reality of it. Go on and look and see who uses the water and where the water is going that is being used. Very interesting to, to see that. So I guess uh, we get back here to the list that I wanted to get through. We buried again in this stuff. Uh, but I think uh, we've touched on most of the area. I want to take questions that are from you. I don't stay here a lot more that maybe could be touching on. Guys, that's what happens when the deer go. Uh, that, that sheet is out of here, not <laughs> where I would have had that last piece of this. But anyway, um, Asian carp, DEQ water, I think we've done the most of it except the swimmer's itch. Swimmer's itch. We appropriated $250,000 for that by my push in the, in the Senate, and we kept it in, in the House, and we done it the second year, and we've now funded it for the third year. So we have 757000 in there to try to clean up Higgins Lake, and there's 12, 14 other lakes with that problem. People said, we will not buy houses here. Values would go down, and they did during that time. People not putting their kids in that water. And 
if I get some rumors that it's runs, I'll bet you I'm not going back in there. I'll tell you I won't know for bet. So, so I was on part of that group, and uh, I said, no, we're going to fix it. And so we, and so we have, and it just plunged down. Obviously, most of you know the McGann's or duck. That's the beginning. Then comes the snail that this floats down to. Out of that snail comes this little thing by the thousands to attack you and think eat your legs up and whatever. But you think a mosquito bite is bad? Have thousands of them on your body. Uh, not pretty. And so um, that's what we have to attack, and we did, and it's and it's working. So we uh, we're pretty happy that we got that going. So. Other things that we might bring up here today then with you uh, would be uh, line five. It could be the Flint water issue. It could be uh, uh, metformin or plastics. Uh, those could be things that we could continue to talk about. We have a lot of issues with water. How many inland lakes do we have? Inland lakes. No, not just the Great Lakes. But in Michigan, we have 11,000 inland lakes. If you put them all together, does that make another gray lake? Uh-huh. So they look at that and say, who? We got 11,000 of them in lakes, inland lakes, along with the Great Lakes. So nobody much doesn't talk much about those. Pretty important to us, so they might important. With that, I hope you've gotten some information from where I am. Don't know a lot about all of the, uh, this, but we've studied enough of it that we can probably talk somewhat intelligently about it as your state rep or your senator. Uh, they need to get that kind of background in order to be able to know what's the right thing to do. Legislation is important, but you gotta do the right, right legislation, not, to, not just to pass something because I'm upset about something. I need to make sure it's good policy. Good policy. Yes. Thank, and thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you today. Sorry about the. <laughs> yeah, okay. Don't make the questions too hard. Okay, here we go. Uh, uh, please explain the purpose, and I think you did to some degree, but let me, let me see if you have anything to add to this. Please explain the purpose of the Great Lakes uh, Legislative Caucus and how does uh, legislature get appointed? How, do how did you get appointed to serve on that? Yeah, well, when you join the Great Lakes Water Caucus for the state of Michigan, each state has their own little caucus. And so you'll join that, and I did in 2005. I didn't look to be the vice chair ever. I just w thought Michigan has a lot of water, more than anybody else, and a lot of the issues in my Senate or House district were dealt with those issues over on the lakes. So um, you get there uh, on that caucus, and then every year they'll come around, I, they being the national, um, organization and see if there's anybody willing to serve on the executive board of that. I was willing to sell it on the executive board and I was elected by the group then to be set on the, on, and that's 19 people from all around. From that executive board then, you are voted in to represent uh, the uh, ELFS and then um, and that's how it happens. That is the steps, the process to, to walk through to get to be where I'm at today or the chair. The chair is out of Wisconsin. The thing but with it, though, it is bipartisan. So in the rules of that organization, if you have a Democrat president, chairman, you must have a Republican vice chair. President is a Republican. You must have a Democrat. You can't elect. You can't elect everybody from the same party. Can't work that way. 
So it's back and forth. So it's made up of, uh, uh, and those are the rules of the organization. All right, thank you. Uh, in proportion to other issues in the state, how much vocal concern for environmental or Great Lakes issues does your office receive? Oh, uh, depends on uh, at to what level it has come up. You know, there's a lot of lot of chatter about Line Five, so you have certain member of um, certain uh, groups at certain times uh, advocate hard uh, for that. The Ice Mountain Water Plant, uh, the increase they're looking to do, at times you get a lot of uh, input from uh, environmental groups on that. But uh, it depends on if they think you're going to move, vote, do something on a bill. Uh, you'll hear about those issues uh, at that point in time. A lot, uh, I tell people, there's no reason for you to advocate for something in the budget in July, in August, September. Nobody's dealing with it. Nobody's looking at it. Advocate when we're dealing with a budget. That's January, February, March, April, and we have it out of there by June. That's the input time because the budget and the money, the $56 billion budget for the state of Michigan, 56, just over, is dealt with during that period of time. You advocate in July and August, who are you going to be advocating to? Most of us aren't there. We're back in our district. But uh, proper and an appropriate time is when we're actually dealing with the budget. All right. Thank you. Uh, how far along has the funding come for the creation of a new lock at, at the Sioux Box? Well, my problem with it, we study something to death. We've studied that darn thing for a long, long, long time. They know we need to do this. Uh, I'm afraid they get hung up on another study that needs to be done. And these studies go on forever and ever. So uh, if the congressman was here, I'd be telling him the same thing. Yeah, how are we going to push this on through so we get the funding? That's the piece now. Approve the contracts get this thing going because it's going to take years, years to get it done. So uh, we start today. We're going to be many, many years getting that lock completed. So uh, I'm concerned that somebody that does not want it, doesn't care about it, somewhere in the United States will just drag it out. That's, that's my fear. It isn't. It's Michigan and all but do they understand the importance of the Sulak as we understand the importance of the Sulak to our nation? So hopefully John Molinar and the likes, our, our senators, can, uh, can advocate and push like we did with the caucus here, uh, the Great Lakes Caucus, and sent that right to the president, right to members of Congress, m all the governors. We said those letters went to them representing that organization that I do as vice chair. All right, thank you. I know we've taken uh, more of your time than, than we asked for, and your time is valuable, so maybe one more question. It's up to you here. Uh, uh, if you get me to the doctor by 3 o'clock, I'm doing fine. That's, <laughs> <what I'm> doing. <laughs> that's, that's where we go next. All right. Are your legislative colleagues from other states spending as much money on protecting the Great Lakes as the state of Michigan? Oh. No, no, um, none of them are surrounded by the Great Lakes. And so, no, we spend more time and money uh, on the Great Lakes than I think any of them. I mean, Wisconsin is, you know, really has a long stretch there, but nothing like Michigan. I mean, it goes right around us. So uh, it would be up to, uh, we would be, no question about it, spending a lot more money than any other state. Not that it's not important to them, but, uh, yeah. All right. I know you, ooh, uh, I appreciate you coming up and especially being injured, and I hope that didn't have anything to do with the deer. But, uh, uh, no. Well, it was at the deer camp. That <laughs> tell you so it did have something to do with the it deer. It did have something. All right. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. <laughs>